today with different directives being issued on the reopening of the nation's universities. We look at the latest developments regarding the strike by university lecturers under the ages of ASU. Also on the breakfast, Nigerians have become used to the words national grid collapse with yet another nationwide power failure. What's the way forward for the electricity sector in the country? Let's so we'll have in-depth analysis of some of today's newspaper headlines in Off the Press. We're back with the breakfast. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. We're wishing you live as usual from a studios island Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messia Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen and thanks for joining us. All right, indeed. Uh, it's been a whirlwind day. We'll have discussions regarding that um, as we introduced earlier with our guests, uh, a panel of analysts for both subjects, um, be it electricity situation in the country, uh, albeit uh, the acid strike. But Mercy, I have one question for you. Do you have power, Do you have power yesterday? You noticed the power went off or what? Yes, yeah, so, so I, I slept with power and I woke up with power, so. All right, all right. You, you <laughs> slept with power, that's power supply. <laughs> of course. Ah, so, so what is the whole, the whole talk of... Um, no, but I think that at some point, you know, everywhere was, hmm. uh, you know, we run on generators and what have you just to ensure that everywhere is lit. But right. uh, it was restored and that's according to reports that the TCN also said that at some point power was restored, so... Hmm. Uh, okay. We would always go back and forth. You know? Well, uh, for me, it was um, there was there was, there was power supply throughout. I, I keep telling you about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. To, I don't want to tell you we where, need where to it know is. Why, why, no, where it I is. won't tell you. But uh, we having constant power supply. Mm. If it goes for like maybe two minutes or one minute, it comes come, back. I'm telling you. I would definitely, <laughs> you know, give the authorities here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we begin with our, our top trending segment, which is a look at. Um, uh, the conversations happening on the social space online. Uh, we look at those trending issues to bring them on the air, just inform you about them and share our thoughts basically on them before uh, we get into our major conversations on the program. The first one is, uh, you know, some chatter or rumors or reports alleging, alleging, we need to stress, uh, we need to stress that these reports are alleging uh, that the, um, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress um, may have left the shores of the country to um, the United Kingdom uh, for medical report. Now, we don't have evidence of this. Uh, I need to point that out. Um, but uh, it is being reported by one particular news website uh, where they said that uh, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, whom uh, presidential candidate has um, taken a few days off uh, before the commencement of the political campaign is expected to uh, start on the 28th, uh, 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 28th of uh, uh, September, I believe. Um, he is taking some days off to go uh, get checked. We don't have this information, like I said. But this, 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 this paper, this publication, is citing multiple sources, saying that uh, the candidate left... Uh, Nigeria at midnight on Saturday for the the city of London, uh, and they are even going as far as um, giving the, the the hospital where he's going to be, which happens to be they're claiming they're claiming it is uh, the Central London Clinic. Uh, he sent met to see doctors there yesterday. Um, they quote the sources saying that he left Nigeria at midnight on Saturday. Uh, he ought to have launched the presidential campaign council today, but it was postponed till Wednesday for the president to return from the U.S. However, it has been postponed indefinitely. Uh, they also cite or quote the source as saying that there is mass disaffection within the party currently. Uh, well, I don't know if this is connected to the fact that the All Progressives Congress uh, postponed the inauguration of its 422-member um, uh, presidential campaign council, which was scheduled for Monday to Wednesday, so that uh, inauguration will hold on Wednesday. I don't know if they to the rumor is connected to this uh, this postponement, but that is what we we have. But however, uh, Bayo Onanuga, who is the spokesperson for the APC presidential council, uh, said in a statement that um, members of that council are expected to participate in a special prayer session to usher 
in the presidential election campaign. Uh, so it was, I'm sure, a bit surprising to some people that that was postponed. Um, so yes, in, indeed, that is what we have. I mean, if you look at uh, uh, last year, 2011, this candidate, presidential candidate, spent over 80 days, according to some reports that have uh, you know, been counting days, because I certainly haven't been counting, but they say, they say, they say, he spent over 80 days uh, patronizing hospitals in France, the United States, and the UK, where he uh, underwent surgery. So for those ones, they weren't hidden. He had a hip, I think, or some sort of leg uh, you know, surgery. Uh, he underwent surgeries, uh, you know, just to get better. Yeah. He, they also say he was flown out of the country some days before Christmas in 2020 to Paris, France. Uh, and there were speculations about his health uh, then. All right. So this is what we have as a first sub training. We won't tell, take too much time on the on the background. Mercy. Well, so I mean, if it's if it's anything to go by, uh, also I mean, looking at the reports that uh, the council, the campaign council that would have been inaugurated, have been postponed uh, prior to um, you know the exact time that it should have been launched, and then uh, there are also reports that he's not around. But we haven't also gotten um, you know reports uh, from. Uh, maybe the aid of the presidential candidate or from his camp saying, hey, we're not around and what have you. But if, it, if there's anything to go by, I mean, it, it, it's quite, uh, it's calling for a lot of concern among those who are within, you know, the party itself saying, it's supposed to be a campaign that starts. So there's what, uh, the 27th, if I'm not mistaken, and so uh, that's uh, Wednesday, politicking or campaigns would eventually start. But like if you rightly mentioned, we will not, you know, take so much time on that. Now, moving away from that, Nigerians react to a Twitter poll. Very hilarious. And I think that Nigerians are very comical. Not all, but some Nigerians are comical, especially when you go on that bed app. <laughs> it's quite funny. I really don't know what's the origin behind or, you know, the brain behind that particular poll that came out. But I just think that it was just one of those mischievous things and hilarious things that Nigerians, you know, get to engage in. So there was a comparison between Beyonce and Choma Jesus. And you know that Beyonce is Beyonce. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> she, you know, she's a fantastic and amazing singer, uh, as you can see. And uh, she's done a lot of songs and what have you. And then you have Choma Jesus, who is a gospel artist, uh, who's also Nigerian. So... I just think the Nigerians are just trying to be very hilarious right there. And so they did the comparison and say between Choma, who's popular. So the popularity between Choma Jesus and Beyonce was uh, what that Twitter poll was about. And uh, trust me, the reactions right there are very, very, very calm. If you're having a, a hard day or a bad day or hard time, I think you should just, you know, just go ahead and check that poll and look at the comments that are underneath it. It's just for, you know, light hat. That's what I would rather say. So it, it's been really, really funny. Out of that, I think at entire, um, let's say that uh, out of 29, uh, I don't have the, the facts right now with me, about 29, 29 votes or thereabout, uh, Trauma Jesus was stopping the chat as against Beyonce. And we're talking about Beyonce here, but of course, like I said, for me, it's very comical and very hilarious. All right. Um, congratulations to both uh, artists on having their, their time on, on, on air. Um, <laughs> final trending, uh, top trending story to this morning. Uh, of course, uh, a protest by retired Nigerian soldiers, you know, over uh, salary issues, pension issues, you know, uh, amongst the rank of those serving, uh, also those who are retired uh, in the military, they went to the streets in Abuja yesterday. I mean, I don't know if we can roll pictures of that protest. Can we roll pictures of the protest? Well, uh, these are military veterans you can see on your screen there, uh, under the ages of retired members of the Nigerian Armed Forces and the Coalition of Concerned Military veterans, uh, they staged the third phase, what they call the third phase of their security debarment allowance, uh, the third phase of their protests, rather, over uh, the non-payment of their security debarment allowance, uh, amongst others.
their security department allowance, among others. They went to the Ministry of Defense in Abuja uh, yesterday. You know, they pitched their tent at the uh, ministry. They blo actually blocked access to the Ministry of Defense uh, located at Ship House uh, on Olushek Mobasunjo Way in Abuja. The FCT probably taking a cue from uh, um, Nance, who have now, uh, you know, become accustomed to, to blocking roads. So they blocked the road. And uh, they're saying that these are the issues we have. Please pay us what we are owed. Uh, security debarment allowance. I don't know if you've heard of that before, Mercy. Uh, but, but a spokesperson for the group, I think he is the national secretary of uh, the group that's retired uh, members of the Nigerian... Uh, rather, the Consent, Coalition of Concerned Military Veterans, yes. Um, he said that that the uh, the protest was to, to demand the payment of the security department allowance owed them by the federal government. He also said the Minister of Defense had refused to disburse the allowances despite major approval by or approvals by the president. Uh, he said pay them, but the man has refused uh, to pay them. He said, quote, uh, we've had meetings with the defense minister, but he appears to be headstrong heartless and unperturbed concerning the grievances of retired military officers as he never paid nor showed any interest or concern to pay these allowances, especially the security department allowances. Interestingly, President Buhari has approved the payment of this allowance, but Magashi, that's the defense minister, uh, has refused to make the disbursement. So, uh, Oga, pay, pay them their money so they can, they, can, they can go home. I just like how you put it. It's very simple. Uh, it's, uh, it would really be very sad and unfortunate that uh, for these persons, I mean, we're talking about soldiers who have been involved in Ekumak War from Sierra Leone to Liberia, peacekeeping missions, wherever, whatever. I mean, you can go on and on. Do they really have to, you know, protest under the rain after serving their nation and going out there to, to defend, you know, the territorial integrity of the country? and then would have to come back to protest on paid allowances. I think we can do better. The big question for me right now is if the president had given an approval uh, for these funds and allowances to be paid, why then is, you know, this bossman being held on to? Who is actually holding it? What's the problem, you know, with the defense minister exactly? Why are they not being paid? The president has given an approval. I think we can do better. And this will go, you know, a long way in solving the problem of insecurity that we face. You know, this this men who have actually given their time, their, you know, time where they were quite young, giving it to serving their country and would actually come back. It, it's quite tempting because at the end of the day, it might not necessarily be an excuse. But if you look at, you know, the security challenges and situation that we're faced with every other time, you find out that there are different persons who are picking arms. And so I'm not sure we want to, you know, get to that point where, you know, these persons will be allowed to consider picking, taking arms uh, to begin to fend for themselves. Let's also, you know, um, respect the time and effort that has been put in. In, in simple and short, pay them what is due. Uh, that, that would be what it is. But that's the much we can take this morning. Yeah, but be, be, before we go, um, we have a bit, a bit of time. Um, the, the, the debarment actually mean, you know, means that you're excluded from certain rights, privileges, uh, possessions, you know, practices in, in, that you were meant to have. Um, so I'm suspecting that these, um, these protesters or these protests or the debarment allowance are for those who probably, uh, because of injury, you know, because of one, one factor or the other, whilst in active service, uh, are not able to actively work in the military again and earn a living and therefore they have to be given something uh, to sustain themselves. Or maybe the families of those who are who've been lost in combat, who are fallen soldiers, who, who have to be given some sort of allowance because their family members died in active service. And at this time, they would have been fending for their families. Uh, most of these will probably be breadwinners. For instance, um, I see that there was a, a lady uh, who spoke at the protest to reporters, uh, Anna Nanven. She's quite young. Um, uh, she said that uh, her husband is a corporal uh, who was killed by Boko Haram terrorists in, uh, in 2015 during an attack on uh, military barracks in 2015. Uh, you look at that, that's quite recent. 
you know. So she said she had received only one uh, debarment allowance disbursement, you know. So uh, I think the husband died. Uh, so since her husband's demise, he's received only one. He died in 2015. So I think that this is um, a sort of allow allowance. You know, it's not a pension alone, but it's also an allowance, apart from the pensions, the, the debarment allowance probably being something that goes to the family of those who died in active service, who probably at this time would, pro would be in active service if, if not for the death, or probably are injured and cannot work and would be in active service at this time. Uh, if not for the uh, uh, the the injury, you know. But it's it's really sad uh, if we hear that the president has approved such an amount of money and the minister of defence is not uh, has not disbursed it. Then that that's a, quite a shame. And uh, I think we shouldn't be hearing things like this at all, at all, at all. Well, yeah, like you have rightly mentioned, it is not uh, what it should be, and it's very unfortunate that it has to be this way. I mean, what, what happens to people giving out their time. And, and I think that this is one factor that over time discourages a lot of persons from being part, you know, of a system, several system, or even, you know, different sectors because of all of this. How do you explain the fact that over time there's an agreement? If people actually work and, and they are entitled to all of this benefit that should be given, I really don't know what the excuse would be. But we're hoping that, you know, the president will be in the know of this, that the approval that he had given uh, action had not been in taken based on that approval. Maybe something will be done. We can only do better as we turn 62. We'll take a break then. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the pages of a national daily. So we'll call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.